Shalom, and welcome to Via Havta Yisrael, a Hebrew phrase which means you shall love Israel. We hope you'll stay with us for the next 30 minutes as our teacher, Dr. Baruch, shares his expository teaching from the Bible. Dr. Baruch is the senior lecturer at the Zera Avraham Institute based in Israel. Although all courses are taught in Hebrew at the Institute, Dr. Baruch is pleased to share this weekly address in English. To find out more about our work in Israel, please visit us on the web at loveisrael.org. That's one word, loveisrael.org. Now, here's Baruch with today's lesson. In this week's study, we're going to see a most significant transition away primarily from the Sanhedrin, the Jewish leadership, the high priests, the elders and such, and a movement to the Roman leader in Jerusalem. And of course, I'm speaking about Pontius Pilate. Now, when we look at this scripture, we are going to see that Pontius Pilate and him alone he was going to make that final decision. We're also going to see that he had absolute authority under Roman law to decide what to do with Yeshua. And he acknowledged this power, and also we see that he wanted to set him free. So if he had the power, he had the desire to set him free, why didn't he? And the answer is this, because Pontius Pilate was a man pleaser. And the man that he primarily wanted to please was himself. He knew that if he did not keep the Jewish leadership, and hear that carefully, not the Jewish population in general, but the leadership, that they could report to Rome and make his position in doubt. They could threaten to rebel, and this would bring the judgment, the punishment of the Roman Empire upon him, and he didn't want to take that chance. So Pilate, he wanted to please the Jewish leadership. He wanted to do what he wanted to do for Yeshua because, as we'll see, he was convicted that this man was indeed a righteous man. But because of a political desire, an aspiration to hold on to that position at all costs, he made a decision, a decision that was unjust, a decision that was displeasing to God, even though, obviously, God used it. God did not cause Pontius Pilate to make this decision. It was his own selfishness and pride and the desire to hold on to that position as governor in Jerusalem. Well, take out your Bible and look with me to the book of Matthew and chapter 27. The book of Matthew and chapter 27. We're going to begin this study in verse 11. Now, we saw last week that it was the Sanhedrin who convicted him, although they did not want to carry out their, their verdict this death penalty, they wanted the Romans to do so for a few reasons, one of which it was the Romans who would crucify and all knew how horrible, how painful this type of death sentence was. And therefore, they wanted to show everyone, if you follow this one, if you believe in this one, if you're part of that movement, this may be what happens to you. So they wanted to use the crucifixion of the Roman Empire upon Yeshua simply to deter others from believing in him, accepting him, listening to his teachings. And then we see something else. We see that the Roman Empire had to also make a decision. Why? because this had larger implications, a greater message than just one man and one community. Rome at this time represented the world. And we see a prophetic message, and that is this, how the world, when Messiah came the first time, the world rejected him, and likewise, we're going to see when he returns, the world also 
is going to be rejecting God. And there's another very important principle, and that's this. Pontius Pilate, he wanted to make the decision that he thought was in his best interests. And here's the biblical lesson for us. Whenever I do what I think is best for me, based upon how I see things, I will always, always make a ungodly, unwise, and the wrong decision. Why? Good decisions, godly decisions, righteous decisions are always based upon the revelation of God. You don't do it because of how it's going to impact you. You do it out of love for God, out of an agreement to His truth, submitting to Him, wanting to bring honor and glory to the Lord God Almighty. Pilate, he wasn't interested in that. So let's begin Matthew 27, verse 11, where we saw that Yeshua was bound and sent over to the Roman Empire. And we read in verse 11, Yeshua, he stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, saying, Are you the king of the Jews? Now, I would put a underscore under that phrase, the king of the Jews. That is an idiom for Messiah or the Christ. So Pontius Pilate, remember, even though he was a Gentile, he was living in Jerusalem. He dealt with Jewish people extensively. And therefore, he would know a little bit about this term, the king of the Jews relating to the anointed one, the Christ, the Messiah. He heard some things about it, and he wanted to know, are you this one? And notice Yeshua's response. But Yeshua, he was saying to him, as you say. What does that mean? Literally, you say. And this is, in that culture, this is a way of affirming what one, someone said. That is, Yeshua was saying, yes, I am the Messiah. Yes, I am the king that, that you have mentioned. We also know in another gospel, Yeshua spoke to him saying, for now, my kingdom is, is of another world, but there's coming a time when that's going to change. So Yeshua affirmed who he was. Now move on to, to verse 12. And in their accusation against him. Now, literally, it simply means among this accusal, their condemnation of the Sanhedrin of Yeshua. We see that in light of this condemnation against him, this sentencing him, and who did it? This accusation was made by, the text says in the middle of verse 12, the high priest and the elders notice it says and i want to translate this literally it says nothing absolutely nothing he answered was his response so against this these charges that he's guilty and that's what this accusation said he was guilty he was worthy of the death sentence they sent him over bound saying that he is a dangerous man for the well-being of the Roman Empire. All of this is understood. And Yeshua, he answered nothing. And again, based upon the Greek text, what is emphasized here is the fact that he said nothing. No response. And then notice something else. Verse 13. Then Pilate says to him, Do you not hear all that they testify against you? And again, what do we read? Look at verse 14. And he did not answer him, not with even one word. And what was the outcome of Yeshua's silence? Notice what it says. So that the governor was exceedingly amazed. Now, what is this all about? Very simply. Pontius Pilate was used to giving judgment. 
One of the things that he did as the governor, he would set, and we'll see this in a moment, in judgment hall upon the, the throne of judgment. And he was used to people begging him, denying the charges, speaking, speaking, speaking all types of, of excuses and explanations and why that, that he should not find such a person guilty. Everyone was pleading for, for mercy, for forgiveness, or denying the charges. And here's Yeshua. And they want, that is the Jewish leadership, not the Jewish people in general, but the Jewish leadership, they want to put him to death. And why? Very simply. They wanted to use the Roman death penalty by crucifixion as a deterrent. To, to tell everyone, if you follow this one, if you listen to what he has said, if you become a disciple of him, crucifixion is what you can expect. They wanted to see Yeshua crucified upon a tree in order that his movement would come to an end. How wrong they were. And so in this passage of scripture, we see that the governor, Pontius Pilate, he was amazed with Yeshua's silence. It says he was exceedingly amazed. Verse 15. But, now we're dealing into another matter, but according to the festival, the governor was accustomed, he had a tradition at the festival to release one prisoner to the crowd whom they wanted. Now, Pontius Pilate, remember, he was a man pleaser, and the man that he wanted to please most was himself. And therefore, he, we're going to see that he knew it was because of jealousy and envy that, that Yeshua was turned over. He knew that Yeshua was not a threat to any physical thing. He came not for a physical purpose. He came for a spiritual message, a spiritual work. Now, is that going to have and should that have a physical outcome in our life, in our behavior, our deeds, everything? Obviously, it should. But Pontius Pilate knew all of these lies, all of these statements that were coming to him from the leadership, the Sanhedrin. He knew that Yeshua was not a threat that, that Rome at that time needed to be concerned with. So he wanted to use this tradition that always the governor had. Now, the festival they're talking about is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And what is foundational during the Feast of Unleavened Bread? Well, it begins with the partaking of the Passover, the Passover lamb. The preparation day was when the lambs were sacrificed. They were eaten, partaken of on the first day of unleavened bread. And because Passover represents redemption, there was this tradition, the governor, not just Pontius Pilate, but, but before him, there was this tradition in order for the Roman Empire to say, it's your festival, it's a time of celebration. We understand how significant it is, the message of this day. So we are going to release one prisoner to you, whomever you desire. Verse 16, Pontius Pilate wanted to use that in order to set Yeshua free. We read in verse 16, but having then, at that time in other words, the Roman government had a prisoner and it was a very notable one. Now, the one we're talking about was called, look at the end of verse 16, Barabbas, in Hebrew, bar Abba. And it says that he was a notable one in other scriptures. It tells us that his charge, he was a murderer and he died at a time of insurrection. This was an act of rebellion, but here's the key. See, most people think that this insurrection would be against the Roman Empire. It was not. Now, how can I be so sure? Very simply. 
when someone committed a crime against the Roman Empire. It's, it's being their insurrection, threatening it. What was the consequence? Immediate death. Barabbas was being held. He was not held for insurrection against Rome, but he was held for insurrection against the Sanhedrin. He was against the Jewish leadership because they were participating. They were enabling Roman impression. He saw the greatest offenders were not the Romans, but the Jewish leadership that, that conspired with Rome that kept the people in bondage this is what he did not like and therefore Pontius Pilate being a wise individual he says I'll choose one that the Sanhedrin they hate why again we see in the Gospels that Pontius Pilate wanted to set Yeshua free he had the power to do so he had the desire to do so but once more because of fear of what the leadership, the Sanhedrin might say to the Roman government. In Rome, those leaders, they could cause problems for Pontius Pilate. He knew this. So he wanted to do something that could accomplish his purposes, but would not put his leadership, his position as the governor of Jerusalem, Jerusalem at risk. So he chose with intent based upon wisdom this one barabbas and there's another aspect now the greek manuscripts are clear bar abba was his his description like we would say his family title but his first name was yeshua or jesus just like yeshua means right jesus of nazareth so pontius pilate had another scheme and that was this when the people would cry out Yeshua, they would, would be meaning either Yeshua, the Son of God, or Yeshua, Bar Abba, Barabbas. But he could determine which Yeshua he wanted to free. So he thought he was going to come out being wise and accomplish his desire regardless of what, what the people wanted. And therefore, this is another reason why they chose, or Pontius Pilate chose Barabbas. Look at verse 17. Therefore, they gathered together, and, and Pilate said to them, so the Jewish leadership and, and others are there. They have gathered together. And Pontius Pilate, he, he spoke to them, and he says, Whom do you want that I should release to you, Barabbas or Yeshua, the one called the Messiah now notice how he put that in this one who is called Messiah the Christ now here again he was hoping that people would say Yeshua and then he could make the decision it was Yeshua the one called the Christ so he gave them this this choice and notice something look if you would to verse 18 it says for he knew now, this word knew, if you do a good study of this word for knowing something, it's in a very unusual and a very significant tense. It's in what's called the Greek pluperfect. What does that mean? It's something very remote. Now, what he did not understand, he knew, and this text says, for he knew that on account of envy, that they had delivered him, that they had arrested him and brought him before himself, before Pilate. He knew it was envy, but he didn't know all the situation and the significance surrounded this, this event. How important this event was going to be in all of human history. So he had a very remote knowledge of, of the significance of that day and the decision that he was going to make. Verse 19, we read, And he was sitting upon the judgment seat, the bima. 
So as or while he was sitting upon this judgment seat, notice what happened. We find his wife. Now, a wife biblically, and we always need to look at things from a Torah perspective. And a wife is a helpmate. And certainly here, this woman, Pontius Pilate's wife, is going to give him good advice. Advice that did not just originate from within her, but rather God communicated to her. How do we know this? Well, notice what it says in verse 19. While he was sitting upon the judgment seat, his wife sent to him saying, nothing of you. This means have nothing to do even with this righteous one. Now, notice here, his wife, a helpmate, is telling her husband, presumably, she loves him. She wants him to do the right thing. And she says, nothing, have nothing against this one. And what does she say about this one? This one who is righteous, very significant. Now, how did she know about him? That he was righteous? What was going on? Well, the scripture tells us. She says, for much I have suffered today. Uh, according to the dream, a dream about him concerning him. So God presumably gave her a dream about Yeshua, that he was righteous and that her husband should have nothing to do against this one. Verse 20, but the high priest and the elders convince the crowds. Now, does your Bible say that? Crowds? Most don't. But if you look at it, it says just that, that, that the elders and the high priest, they convinced the crowds, it's in the plural. There were many different groups there. See, if you were under the impression that it was just Jewish people here, this is wrong. There was a variety of different crowds of people. And, and these leaders, the high priests and the elders, they convinced in order that they would ask for Barabbas and Yeshua that, that they would destroy, meaning that, that in the end, Yeshua would be no more. That's what they wanted to do. Now, it's something very important that you need to learn, and that is at that time, at that judgment hall, the variety of people who were there, most of which were not Jewish. Now, how do I know that? Well, if you look, and for the sake of time, I'll just give you the scripture. John chapter 18. Look at verses, primarily verses 28, 29, and 30. There it tells us at this location, in John's gospel, the reader is informed that the leadership these high priests and these elders, those of the Sanhedrin that went and followed Yeshua before Pontius Pilate, they would not go into this, this judgment hall. Why? Because if they did so, they would be rendered unclean. So the text says that, that Pontius Pilate went out to them to speak. So when he was, was speaking to the crowds, it did not represent God-fearing Jewish people. Might there be Jewish people there? Might be. There were all types of people there. Jerusalem was an international city back then, large, significant, much trade. People would pass through it. And we know it was part of the Roman Empire. So many different people would be there in that city at that time. It was Passover day. The Gospels use the term, it was preparation day, which is a synonym for Passover. Most of the God-fearing people would be preparing their Passover lamb, getting that ready. So because of that, the Jewish leadership and God-fearing Jewish people would not be there. Look now to, to verse 22. And Pilate said to them, Therefore, what shall I do with Yeshua, the one called the Christ. Now, he says the first time, the king of the Jews. 
And then two other times after that, so we understand the meaning of that term, he says, call the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. Very important that we see this. The scripture is shouting at the reader, telling us that indeed Messiah died because of his anointing. He was called to die, to lay down his life. And notice what they said in response into verse 22. They say to him, all of them, all the people there, all the different crowds, let him be crucified, verse 23. But the governor was saying, for, for what evil has he done? He knew, now he's defending Yeshua. He says, why? What evil has he done? But all the more, those who were there, all the more were crying out saying, let him be crucified. And when Pilate, when he was seen, that nothing was, was successful, but rather the crowd was, was becoming more. And literally that word crowd is a word for a mob, a riot, an uproar. All that he was trying to do to set Yeshua free, it was just bringing about a greater uproar. Why? Because not the Jewish people, but the leadership. For their purposes, they were doing what they thought was right in their own eyes. And again, whenever we do this, we make the wrong decisions. So what happens? Middle of verse 24. And taking water, he washed his hands before the crowd, saying, Guiltless or clean am I from the blood, and here it is again, the second time, the blood of that righteous one. Why is that important? Because it tells us that, Pete, that Pilate agreed with his wife. He was convicted by his meeting of Yeshua that he was a righteous one. He says, you see to it. And all the people, they answered and said, his blood be upon us and upon our children. Then he sent to them Barabbas. But Yeshua, he flogged and delivered in order that he would be crucified. Now, that statement, that the people made, let his blood be upon us and upon our children. Oftentimes, we think that in too narrow of a way, it's only the Jewish people, but Messiah's blood is not just for Jewish people. It is for all humanity. Everyone who wants to be forgiven, everyone who wants to be redeemed, everyone who wants to be in the kingdom of God must utilize, receive his blood as the redemption for their sin, both Jew and Gentile. And that's why crowds were there. Well, we hope you will benefit from today's message and share it with others. Please plan to join us each week at this time and on this channel for our broadcast of loveisrael.org. Again, to find out more about us, please visit our website, loveisrael.org. There you will find articles and numerous other lectures by Baruch. These teachings are in video form may download them or watch them in streaming video. Until next week, may the Lord bless you in our Messiah Yeshua, that is, Jesus, as you walk with Him. Shalom from Israel.